What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? We are back for another season of Love and Marriage Huntsville. So let me put out my disclaimer before we get started with the review. Y'all know I, I'm, I ain't gonna lie. I contemplated. I thought about it. I wasn't gonna do the season. Y'all know how I was feeling towards the end of last season. Y'all asked me to do it. Y'all, y'all. This was a request, so I'm gonna do the season. And I made a decision. I said, if I'm gonna do the season, I gotta start with a fresh slate. I'm not going to bring anything. I'm not going to carry no old feelings over. I'm going to pretend like this is a brand new show that I never reviewed before. Until the end. But we, but let's get there. So we start this episode off. We have Melody at a photo shoot. And at first we just see her. She's doing her maternity photo shoot. And let me say this. Melody, Melody, I like you with the long hair. You look gorgeous and if y'all have not seen that magazine cover that she just posted i think she posted it either today or yesterday bitch you look good girl for somebody who who done carried four babies and you just got done carrying a baby six months ago seven months ago give or take you look good girl um and it was beautiful it was a beautiful cover um and she's got on a bikini and everything honey it looked it was very tasteful but beautiful now same thing with the photo shoot. Beautiful photo shoot. She looked really nice. And then we see Martel. And it was sort of like, Rrr. and she said, listen, listen, when we left off, I really thought that that was the end, that I was leaving him and that we were done. I did. I did. You know, but at the end of the day, and let me say this about marriage. We all have our opinions. We all can say what we want to say. We all can, you know, all of that. But at the end of the day, Martel said, nobody gets made a mistake. And that's true. And people make mistakes. Martel made a mistake. Um, I'm not going to dwell on all of the ins and outs of the mistake. I'm just going to say Martel made a mistake. Um, and they have decided to work on their family. Do I think the pregnancy probably helped them make that decision? Maybe. Maybe. But that's what they decided to do. And I, I and look, I don't never want to see a family breakup, especially not a black family, especially not a successful black family. I ain't mad. I ain't mad. Now, um, so they're together. They did their photo shoot. They look gorgeous. They just did. It was a nice photo shoot. We've seen the pictures. Um, so you guys have already seen the pictures of the photo shoot, and they look nice. Um, we also get to meet, um, and I think that this season... They're trying to shift their storyline into other avenues, which I think is also healthy. If you are trying to move forward and you guys are trying to put your marriage back together, I think you have exhausted that storyline for our consumption. I think the rest of the healing, the rest of the what you guys are doing with the family, that should be private. I think you've given us all that you should give us if this is the direction that you guys are going in. So I'm fine with that. So we meet. Melody's brother and he's technically he's her half brother but I like the fact that she never said half brother she said my brother and she said that her dad had kids from his first marriage and that her mom was never married to her father I'm thinking she's the only child from her parents and so she said there's a there's a, a big age gap um but that out of her other siblings she's the closest to him and that they do have a relationship. They talk on a regular basis. He's an educator. So to my fellow educator, my hat is off to you, sir. Um, he said that he just retired from education because he has his realtor's license now and he is moving into a different career. And for that, I ain't mad at you, bro. I ain't mad at you. Um, but he talked about how his students knew who he was <laughs> and how his students was giving him the so you're not going to go with my tails, but like you ain't about to go defend your system. You ain't, you just going to let your sister. And it was cute. And as an educator, I know that that is exactly what his kids did. They did. The minute they found out who he was and that he was connected to them. Oh, they was like, so what's up? When we going to roll up on Martel? Like, I know they did. Because my kids would have said the same thing. So anyway, um, but she talked about, um, she talked about how, um, her and her father have uh, sort of on again, off again relationship and how they've, it's been like a year since she's talked to her dad. And he was like, wow. Cause they asked if he was coming to the baby shower. Cause we, this whole episode, this episode and the next episode, it's, it's the season premiere, but it's also 
sort of Melody's Baby special wrapped up because it's called Melody Special Delivery. So 90% of the episode was about Melody. And that's fine because that's what it was called. It was called Melody Special Delivery. It was her baby special. So it's the same as some of these other people who've gotten baby specials. It's just not separate from the Love and Huntsville marriage, you know, thingamabob. So it's sort of wrapped up together. So anyway, um, so they were talking about the baby shower. And so she said, you know, and she said, well, I haven't talked to him. And he was like, well, how do you think he feels about y'all's relationship being so strained? And Melody was like, I don't know. She's like, I don't know how you feel. And he said, why don't you pick up the phone and call and find out? And you know, I understand, I don't know their whole story. So let me preface by saying I don't know their whole story. But what I will say is I do understand where Melody may, may be, because I don't know the whole story, may be coming from. I don't know if she has carried the brunt of their relationship as far as them having a relationship and them maintaining a relationship. I don't know if the if that the most of that has weight has been on her. But I I will say at a certain point I don't it's been a year. Like your phone works is like my phone works. Like after a couple of weeks and you hadn't heard from me, why you ain't pick up the phone and call me? How did we get to a point where we've gone a year and we haven't spoken? So I feel like maybe that's kind of where Melody is coming from. And again, I don't know how much effort in the past Melody put into their relationship versus him. I, I have no idea what that looks like. But I do know that at the end of the day, my phone worked like your phone worked. And if you woke up and realized, wow, I haven't talked to my daughter in three months. Let me see how she's doing. Especially since you know she's on this TV show. You know she's been going through some things and you know she's pregnant. Like, if nothing else, can you check on her and see how she's doing? with her marriage being all over TV and social media, and now you know she's pregnant. So again, I don't know the whole story, but I definitely understand that Melody may or may not have been like, yeah, I'm not calling him. I don't know. But she does invite him to the baby shower, and she says she hopes that he'll be able to make it, and maybe, you know, maybe they can start building from there. So then we see um, Sadarik, remember um, Bartel's friend? Well, I think he's all of their friends from last season. We met him last, well... You know, they did the first season was like a first half, second half. So we met him in the second half of the first season. He came over to help Martel put the room together. You know, he said he's a little behind getting the baby room set up and everything. And they're putting the crib together. And come to find out, so Dark, I would say friends with Martel's mistress, ex-mistress, whatever. And I feel like so Dark was coming from the point of view of Yes, y'all had this affair, but you kind of did her wrong in the sense of he brought up the peasant comment. Um, and I feel like he was coming at Martel from a point of view of y'all were in it together and it's not right to treat her like she did something that you didn't do. That's sort of how I felt. And I feel like that's where everybody was coming from with the whole peasant comment. Now, to... now. Martel's point of view is she came for Melody and that's where the peasant comment came from because she attacked Melody and he was defending his wife. Again, I'm not going to dwell on that. I have said what I had to say about that last season with the whole peasant thing, but I did feel like it was interesting that that Cedric, Sadar, excuse me, Sadar was sort of coming because he's friends with her and his thing was, I found out that they were having an affair the same time that everybody else found out they were having an affair. Like, I knew her, but it wasn't that I knew. Now, I don't know how... I, I don't know about that part because if you go back to the beginning of season one, they were talking like that was Huntsville's worst kept secret. So, I don't know how you friends with her and you ain't know, but everybody else knew. But whatever. So, I thought that was interesting that Sadar was sort of like... I ain't gonna say he was checking Martel because I don't feel like he was checking him. But sort of coming at Martel like, yo, Let's be fair about this, you know. Um, we were all friends. We all knew each other. Like, you can't make it seem like she was a horrible person and you falling on your sword, you know. But at the end of it, Martel was like, I ain't talking about that. Like, I'm not talking about her and I'm not talking about that. And again, you know what? 
I can't be, I'm not mad about that either. And I'm going to tell you why I'm not mad about that either. Because, again, if we're moving forward, we can't keep dwelling. Like, I know we like gossip. We like the salaciousness of it. We like the, ooh, give me the tea. But if y'all are trying to move forward as a family and really try to move into that forgiveness, you can't keep dwelling on it. I know if I were Melody, I wouldn't want to keep seeing him talking to his confessional about this woman. I just wouldn't. So I ain't mad at him for saying, I ain't talking about that. Like, I ain't even mad about that. Moving on. We see them, they go have a 40 um, sonogram and their kids are a little sassy. One of the boys called her Melody and she had to check him like, no, 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 I'm not Melody. I'm mommy. The other little girl was talking about the, the other little girl is bossy and how she don't want no more bossy babies. They are little sassy. But they get that honest because they probably get that from their mama because y'all know Melody's sassy child. Um, so then we see Melody have a meeting um, with the people that she's doing, that's doing the baby shower. Now y'all know it's a production, okay? Anytime, well, no, I shouldn't say that because, hell, we did that for my sister baby shower. We damn sure wasn't doing no professional, but we had meetings like that where we were all in there together and we were like, okay, so your part is this and your part is that and you're going to take care of that? Okay, so that my sister would have a drama stress-free day, which is what it's about. It's all about a celebration. It's all about making sure that the, the family, because, you know, now that we have these co-ed baby showers, it's all about the family making sure they're having a good day and that the, the, the mom isn't stressed out, don't have to worry about nothing. And so we saw that meeting. And so she called Kimmy to finalize um, her guest list. And I guess Kimmy was the only person that had an RSVP child. I don't know. Even though that's the only person they showed us, called, showed us, you know, call it because, of course, showed her calling. Y'all know what I'm saying. Because, of course, we don't care about nobody else that's invited because the only person we know is Kimmy. And so Kimmy was like, yeah, her and, um, her and um and her husband, who for whatever reason right now is blowing my Maurice. I don't know why. Y'all know I love uh Kimmy and Maurice. I don't know why Maurice's name would not come in my head. And she said that they're coming, but she also asked about Letitia and Marcel. And Melody was like, you yeah, know, that's not that's a negative. Now, here's where we are from the reunion till now. It seems like <clears throat> they had maybe had another sit down where apologies melody said apologies were given and apologies were accepted but then and melody said i feel like i felt like we went on our way to some sort of reconciliation but then she said letitia started retweeting stuff on social media that were things that were being said about melody that were negative and she said so that's not the kind of stuff that you do when you're trying to be friends with me that you want to retweet Things that were said about me in a negative light. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up. Sidebar, sidebar, sidebar. So when Sadark was talking to my, uh, Martel, he was talking about them groups, right? And I was like, he's talking about them Facebook groups. Let me tell y'all something. If y'all are not in them Love and Huntsville Marriage Facebook groups, y'all are missing out. When I tell y'all them Facebook groups be off the chain. And when I tell you they be giving it to Martel, that's what he was talking about. And I was like, I, don't, I might not be in all of them groups, but I know I'm in two of the groups that members of the show are also in those groups and they see what's going on and they follow it. So listen, let me tell y'all something. And one of those groups lets me post my videos and one of them groups don't. It's okay though. Shout out to the one that does. Thank you. Anyway, so back to this, back to this. And so... Kimmy was like, well, I, I really was hoping, I feel like that would be a great olive branch. But I understand, where Mel, again, I'm only getting one side of this story. I'm sure we're going to get the, the, Mar Mar the uh, Marceau and Letitia side in a little bit. But for right now, all I have is Melody's side. And from Melody's point of view, I understand her not inviting them. Like, if me and you talk, and I apologize and you apologize, y'all know I say this all the time. If y'all watch my videos, y'all know I say all the time. Don't apologize if you ain't ready to move on. Don't let anybody force you into apologizing for something you're not ready to apologize for. So if you apologize, then let's, I'm, I don't, we can't keep doing this. I'm not going to keep going back and forth with you. If you apologize and I apologize, we are done. And I don't want to keep talking about it. So don't apologize to me on Monday and then on Friday you retweeting something somebody said about me that was nasty. See, that's that, that's that passive aggressive shit. And I don't like it. 
Because now you can say, well, I didn't say it. I didn't say it. Someone so said it. I was just retweeting it. I thought it was interesting. Y'all know. And again, we can look at it from two sides of the coin. We could say, well, stop taking social media so seriously. But if you live and die by social media, and y'all know Melody and Martell, they, are, they live and die by social media. So you knew she was going to see it, and you knew she was going to feel some kind of way about it, which means that you did it purposely for her to have a reaction. Period. Moving on. Um... So then we see Martel go to the counselor. And I like his counselor. I do. Um, the beginning of his session, he was asking Martel, does he feel like Melody has really, truly forgiven him? And he said he did, but then I feel like he sort of hesitated a little bit. I feel like there was something he probably would have maybe said if the cameras weren't there. But again, not my business. I, I'm, I'm going to focus here. I'm going to. Um, but then he started talking to him about the father thing. And I feel like that's what the Hulks have decided that they will let be their storyline this season is relationships with family. So we're going to see, I think we're going to continue to explore Melody's relationship with her dad. Um, and I think we're going to continue to explore Martel's relationship with his dad. And then we saw something during the baby shower, but I'll get there in a second dealing with relationships, but I'll get there in a minute. So... He starts asking Martel about his relationship with his dad. And I think I think Martel believed what he was saying, but I don't think Martel understands the impact of not having a father did have on him. He said that he doesn't feel like it had an impact because he doesn't know what he was missing. He said that none of my friends had their father in the house. He was like, look, I grew up in the hood. Ain't none of us had no daddies. And the therapist was like, so there were no men around? And he was like, yeah, men were around, but they were not serving as daddies. And see, again, there's a difference between being a father and being a daddy. And he said, you know, the things that I do with my kids, like hug them, tell them I love them, hold their hand, make sure I'm there for them at their games and stuff like that. He was like, that's what I mean by I didn't have it and none of my friends had it, so we didn't know we were missing it. Now, I'm going to say this. In my opinion, then that's what you're missing. The fact that you know that you're going to hug your kids, that you're going to kiss your kids, that you're going to tell your kids that you love them. That's what you know you were missing. Because if you can identify that you're going to do that for your kids because you didn't have it from your father, then you've identified what you were missing from having a full-time or what you felt you were missing from having a full-time father in the house. And he said something about, you know, if God could show me, like if God could give me a picture and show me what my life would have looked like if my dad was in the home full time, then I could be like, well, dang, see that? See what we could have if you were just around? And his therapist was like, but I think God has. And I agree. I think, again, like I said, the fact that you are doing the opposite of what you had tells me that you know what you missed. If that makes any sense to what I'm saying, y'all. Y'all let me know if that made sense. Y'all let me know if that made sense. But I do like his therapist, and I hope we continue to see Martel grow. Because you know what? Ron wasn't building a day, child. Ron wasn't building a day because let's get to this baby shower. Because by the end of this baby shower, I was feeling some kind of way about a couple of people. So let's go and get to this baby shower. So the family come rolling in on a horse-drawn carriage, honey, and they are color-coordinated, and they are looking good. Listen. Like Kimmy said, Melody is a little extra, so it's, it's about what I would expect from Melody. And Melody even admitted herself. She was like, girl, you know I'm extra. You are. But it was beautiful. And I ain't even mad. And listen, let me be clear. I ain't even mad. Like, I ain't even mad at it. But it was extra. It was real extra child. They come rolling in like the, like the royal family, honey. And their carriage with all the kids and stuff like that. But it was nice. So that was the entrance to the baby shower. And their friends, uh, what's her name? Destiny, E-Destiny, so Destiny. It's something before that Destiny. And her husband, um, they're hosting. And um, we met them last season as well. They were at the cabin, okay? And um, LaBerrick and Destiny, I want to get the names right. So LaBerrick, we met them at the cabin last season. And so we saw Melody and... Um, we saw Melody and Kimmy talk, because Kimmy and Maurice were there. We saw them talking. And Melody, and you know, Kimmy was like, listen, like, everything is beautiful. Everything looks nice. But I just feel like there's some people missing. And <laughs> Melody said, no, 
Mm -mm. Everybody I invited, I think is here. Yeah, yeah. And she said, yeah, I know. Everybody you invited, I think you, you know. And she, and Kimmy went on to say how she really felt like this would have been a great opportunity to invite, you know, Marcel and, um, you know, the Scots, the other Scots. And Melody, once again, reiterated how she felt about the whole situation about don't apologize to me on Monday and then me retweeting shit that's negative about me on Friday. And Kimmy was like, oh, God. Like, and I don't know if Kimmy didn't know that Letitia did it or if Kimmy didn't realize that that's why Melody was sort of feeling the way she was feeling. Because I think, I feel like Kimmy was like, well, the last time we all talked, I thought we were good. Like, what happened? And so Kimmy was just like, well, I really am. am and you know what, though, Melody said? She said, and I'm done. I don't want no sit downs. We're not doing no kumbayas. Like, I'm done. Like, at a certain point, you just move on and I've moved on. Like, I, I'm, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Um, We saw the mother-in-laws talking. And I thought this was very interesting because they never gave us the impression that the mother-in-laws had issues with each other before. But it was interesting because... Melody's mother made a comment to um, Martel's mother about they seem to be in a good place. Martel mother was like, "Yeah, you know, I told them they would work. I told you they'd work it out. I told you they'd figure it out." And she was like, "Yeah, because you know, I had a couple of conversations with Martel about how I felt, and Martel mama was like a couple, a couple of conversations. She said, "Yeah, but he seemed real receptive to what I had to say," and Martel mama was like, oh, "Okay." And then they just kind of sat there and didn't say nothing else. So I don't know if they just haven't spent a lot of time around each other or if there's actually, like, some tension there, some tension, tension. I don't know. Um, I'm sure if there is, they'll continue to explore it because they showed us that little clip and they kind of left her hanging there. Then we see that Melody's dad did not come to the baby shower. And her brother was there. And she was like, you know, he did tell me when I invited him that he had a prior commitment she said, and I believe it. Like, I don't think he lied to me. She said, he's a very busy guy. He has a lot of things on his plate. So I do believe that he had a prior commitment. She said, however, comma, I'm family. And I just feel like at a certain point, you need to prioritize. And maybe this was something that you could have made a different decision or made an adjustment or at least shown up for a little bit and left. Um, again, not knowing what his prior commitment was, not knowing whether it was something he could or could not get out of, but I do understand where Melody's coming from. Like, if you just had somebody else's birthday party to go to, or maybe you had a, a lunch and you bought a ticket for, like, maybe, because it looks like their, their shower was on a Sunday, and it looks like it was, like, late afternoon, like, after church crowd, because y'all know they in the Bible Belt, child. So it looked like it was an after, because they were doing brunch, um, so, you know, I don't know what her dad is into. You know, I don't know what his prior commitment was. But I definitely can understand where she's coming from and say, listen, you know, one of your grandkids is being born and I haven't seen or talked to you in a year. Maybe you could have moved some things around. But again, I think that's something that we're going to continue to explore as the season goes on. And I'm here for it because, again, we, we got to shift the storyline. We just It's got to be something different. So, then we see where Destiny, and it's not E-Destiny, or it's, it's Destiny, it's Destiny, I double check, it's Destiny. Destiny rolls, now listen, y'all, y'all know how I feel about my Kimmy. Now, Destiny done rolled up on Kimmy with some old bullshit, and that's what it is, it's bullshit. She gonna say to Kimmy that she felt some kind of way about last season, Kimmy saying that she ain't know her, her husband like that. But he made good chicken, though. Why were you offended by that? And Kimmy was like, I can appreciate that that's how you feel, but I, I don't. I didn't know y'all. Like, and from my understanding, LaDeric, like, he has, like, a barbecue joint. Like, he has a, that's his business. And I felt like she was giving him a compliment, like, but we know you make some good chicken. Like, I don't understand what you was offended by. And I felt like, I said, okay, you were reaching, like, you were way up here. You was reaching for that one. Because there was nothing insulting about what Kimmy said. And I felt like you being insulted by it says more about you than it did about Kimmy. And I don't know if you was just trying to get some camera time. I don't know if y'all trying to build a storyline, but that was just stupid. Like, there was not, there's nothing there. There's nothing to see here. Then, when she was in, um, they was getting ready to start playing the games, 
she going to say, and the winner of this game gets a gift certificate to the whatever the name of her husband's um, barbecue, because they're married now. They weren't married then, but they're married now. And she's pregnant. Congratulations, Gary. But that don't change how I feel. Um, she going to say, um, um, she going to say, um, yeah, and y'all know that he has good part barbecue. Yeah, uh, don't you, Kimmy? Kimmy was like, And this is how I feel. I feel like that's not what you want. I feel like you don't want to pick a fight with Kimmy over something stupid. Now, if Kimmy did something, said something, came out the way, came out her neck sideways, that's one thing. And I feel like she handled it better than I probably would have handled it because she kind of was like, well, you know, my bad. I was making a joke. Maybe you ain't find it funny. But I really didn't know y'all. So sorry you were offended by it. And so for you to come back later and then continue to just throw that jab at her out of nowhere in front of everybody, because let's be clear, in front of everybody, you said that. I'm going to have to keep my eye on you, Destiny. Because that was stupid. So then, um, then we see Maurice and Marcel have a conversation. Now, the total opposite of Melody... We have Martell. And I told y'all, I tried to start this season off with a clean slate. Notice, I've been real nice. I've been pretending like I don't know these people. Martell, it seems like Martell and Maurice and Marceau and Letitia have been having these text messages back and back. I mean, back and forth. And here's the shit that pissed me off. Martel tried to throw some slick shit out there, talking about some. Well, I mean, all I said was, you know, Letitia having a liposuction and a butt lift wasn't enough for you. You just wanted to throw that shit out there. And I'm mad that I even repeated it. But I had to repeat it to explain to y'all why I was irritated with what Martel did. That was real disrespectful. You didn't have to do that, Martel. You didn't have to throw that out there. And Maurice was like, well, why are you put me in it? Like, first of all, that's between the two of y'all. Then they go back to the reunion talking about some, I guess Martel felt some kind of way when Maurice was cutting them off when they was about to argue and cutting them off and was like, as long as we keep throwing jabs back and forth at each other, we're not going to be able to move forward. And it, when you see the clip that they showed, and I remember when it happened at the reunion, Letitia was getting ready to start some shit. And Maurice stopped Letitia from saying what Letitia was saying. And he was like, if we keep throwing jabs, we're going to continue to go in the wrong direction. And we're going to eventually get to a point of no return. Let's not do this to each other. And Martel was like, you were stopping us from defending ourselves. And when they were saying stuff, it was cool. But then when we got ready to say something, it was a problem. And he was like, that ain't, that ain't even what happened. Like, that's not even... What are you talking about? And I feel the same way because I watched that reunion and I was like, I, don't, I, rem I know that clip. I remember that clip and I remember when it happened. And I was like, Maurice and Kimmy were really trying to stop it from becoming a bigger issue than what it was. And I just, Martel, I be trying, y'all. But that was that was that was a bitch move that you did. That was a bitch move that you pulled because all you wanted to do was just put it out there about Letitia's plastic surgery. That was so unnecessary. That was so unnecessary. Anyway, y'all, that was the episode. Y'all let me... Child, it's been 30 minutes. Lord, y'all know I didn't mean for this review to be no damn 30 minutes. Let me know what y'all think. Bye.